What's going on everyone? It's OvTech coming at you today with a review of the MSI GT62 VR Dominator Pro gaming laptop. So the two biggest features that stand out immediately with this 15.6 inch gaming laptop is that it has a G-Sync display and it also has that GTX 1070 graphics chip inside. That's the full desktop performance graphics from Pascal. So it's really exciting. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and dive right into this review. So first things first with an exterior examination, it has an aluminum lid with the MSI light up logo and those red nice little aesthetic touches in the aluminum top lid panel. Moving on to the inside, it also has an aluminum panel next to that steel series keyboard, lots of ventilation and three buttons that you could press. One that changes the fan speed and puts on cooler boost, which is a nice little feature. So I'm gonna do that now for you guys. So immediately cranks up those fans. So if you notice your temperatures getting kind of hot in those intense gaming sessions, that will cool your system down and you can press that whenever you like. So that's pretty convenient. This button opens up the X split caster and this last button has that still steel series logo, changes the lighting for the different lighting profile configurations that you can set in the MSI command center very conveniently. So I really like having that option right there at your fingertips. So for the base of the laptop, it is actually plastic, but the build feels really nice. You see there that large red mesh for plenty of ventilation and really large feet that really give it a light, nice little bit of elevation to get that extra bit of airflow. And you see there on the back right side, that 3.5 watt subwoofer by Dyn Audio and the hinge mechanism to open this laptop up really isn't anything to write home about. It opens quite easily with one hand. I wouldn't consider this flimsy, but it's by no means a really tight hinge mechanism. As far as the keyboard flex, pretty minimal because there's that aluminum panel and it adds to the typing experience, not having your keys bounce up and down like they would if you had a plastic interior panel. So now that I've gone ahead and opened the laptop, I'm running here the NZXT cam software. You can monitor all your internal components, also see the exact SKU for the different hardware inside your system. So I would definitely recommend this software from NZXT. So taking a quick look here, of course we have that GTX 1070 eight gigabyte GDDR5 graphics chip, as well as the Intel i7 6700HQ quad core processor with hyper threading and for random access memory, two 16 gigabyte sticks of Kingston DDR4. And for storage, you have two devices, one 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive, as well as a 256 gigabyte SATA 3 M.2 SSD. Also, it supports NVMe PCIe M.2 SSD. So if you wanna get those 2200 megabyte per second speeds, that option is definitely open to you if you wanted to swap it out. So on the topic of storage, I'm gonna go ahead and run the Crystal Disk Mark V on both drives so you can get an idea of what kind of read and write speeds you can expect out of these different drives. So the sequential read speeds over 500 megabytes per second and the writes over 300 megabytes per second for that M.2 SATA 3. So let's go ahead and take a look at the drive speeds on the 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive that comes with this laptop. So taking a look at those read and write speeds with a one terabyte mechanical two and a half inch hard drive inside this MSI laptop. That's right in line with what you would expect. I think the 7200 RPM mechanical drive selling point is that it is an affordable option to get that matched storage capacity. So with most of what's to say of the internal specifications out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at all the connectivity that comes on this laptop. So on the left side, we have that Kingsington Lock USB 2.0 line in, line out, microphone in and headphone out. So moving on to the rear of the laptop on your right side, we have that ethernet port. This is a regular USB 3.1 type C, HDMI 1.4 mini display version 1.2 and that AC power. And moving on to the right side of the laptop, you see there we have three USB 3.0 ports and we have that SD card reader near the front of the laptop. So before jumping right into some benchmarks and that gaming performance, let me give you guys a quick typing test, a quick preview of the touchpad and what you can expect. And for the touchpad, at first it felt really smooth to me. 
although it actually has a very slight, subtle, coarse texture to it. So don't expect to be waking up your neighbors with that 3.5 watt subwoofer and those two 3 watt speakers. Although for laptop speakers, it is pretty loud and it will fill the room. So let me give you a quick sound test. So as you can see, that's pretty loud. It goes over my voice and it's pretty far away. Definitely room filling. And having that subwoofer, it really brings a little bit of a punch when you're listening to music or playing games. So it is very suitable to not use headphones, not use external speakers. They're pretty impressive, especially for laptop speakers. Actually the best I've heard in a laptop review I've ever done on the channel. So you might be asking yourself, why does this dude have an iPhone propped up to this IPS display while he's doing review? Well, you can sync your iPhone or iPad with the MSI command center, and you can look at the fan speeds, adjust the fan speeds from here, and you'll also take a look at the CPU and GPU temperatures, which is really nice because if you're in game, you can take a look at that to monitor your system and also adjust accordingly. So right here with the CPU and GPU fans barely going at around 1100 RPM, the CPU is at 43 degrees Celsius and that GPU is at 46 degrees Celsius. And I have not done anything intensive at this point, so keep that in mind, just played that YouTube video. So I went ahead and pressed that cooler boost button so you can see there those fans cranking up, spinning, going all the way to almost 4,000 RPM. That's at 3,800 RPM on the CPU and GPU fan. So I'm gonna give that cooler a good two minutes to work its magic. So CPU and GPU temperatures drop down into the 30s, 35 and 39 degrees Celsius respectively, which is nice to see that it has the capability to lower it to that degree if you do want to crank the fans up. So one more thing worth noting about the MSI Dragon Center is it also shows the power consumption, which I think is a really nice feature to have. So showing right there when the laptop is just running some basic monitoring software, it is using around 50 watts to 60 watts. So that could be in part to not able to have NVIDIA G-Sync and NVIDIA Optimus at the same time. So that NVIDIA G-Sync is gonna take up a little bit more power, even as power efficient as the GTX 1070 is, than it would be having that NVIDIA Optimus that's able to switch from integrated graphics. And I should also note that I have the power plan currently set on high performance. So for gaming, given that this does have a 75 watt hour battery, do expect around an hour and 30 minutes of gaming and around four hours of productivity work with medium brightness. Okay, well, let's finally get to the fun part of the review. Let's play some games. So Little Awe has done our game selection for us today. Starting off with Little Awe's favorite game. Yeah, it's GTX 1070. All right, well, that's enough Little Awe. I'm going to stop annoying him, let him get his catnap in. So being that the display is a 60 Hertz G-Sync panel, it will synchronize the refresh rate to the GTX 1070. That'll minimize visual artifacting, stuttering, and latencies. Although at just 60 Hertz 1080p, you'll find that the hardware capabilities of the GTX 1070 go way past this in a lot of circumstances at 1080p. So if you did want more than a 60 Hertz G-Sync display using an external monitor with that mini display port, expect near 80 frames per second in Batman Arkham Knight at ultra settings and around 40 FPS at 4K. Star Wars Battlefront at 1080p ultra settings around 130 frames per second and at 4K closer to 50 frames per second. The division on ultra at 1080p 75 FPS and if run at that 4K resolution, expect to get an average near 40 frames per second. Mirror's Edge Catalyst Ultra 1080p over 90 FPS, Doom 120 FPS Ultra 1080p and at 4K an average of 45 frames per second. And The Witcher 3 is just so well suited for the 60 Hz G-Sync display getting 60 FPS on ultra with hair works on. And lastly, for a first person shooter game like Overwatch with the epic quality settings at 1080p near 120 frames per second and at 4K, edging very close to an average of 80 frames per second on high settings. Overall, this is a really solid choice for a gaming laptop that has the GTX 1070 as well as a G-Sync panel 
pretty hard to come by these days. Looks like the drag competition right now is from that Asus GL502 VS. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. Be sure to drop this video a thumbs up if you liked it, because it really helps me out. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, awe of tech, what are you waiting for? Get subscribed, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on. Well, it's been awesome. I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.